Welcome to Mortgage Minutes, where we demystify the loan process for you. I'm your host, Austin Baker, along with my co-host, Jonathan Bunn. What up, Pete? Woo! Let's go! Woo! All right, what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about what to do when appraisals come in low. Wah, wah, wah. So, first off, we always want a house to appraise. Sellers do, buyers do, lenders do, everybody involved in the transaction does, but every once in a while, it comes in low. And so we kind of want to shoot a video about what happens or what can happen when that does take effect. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, Austin, what is an appraisal and how does that whole process work from our standpoint? Yeah, good question. So the appraisal is a very important document when you're buying a house, especially if you're financing it. The lender needs to know what is this house worth, not just what are you willing to pay for it, but in the unfortunate event that you stop paying your mortgage and the lender repossesses your house through foreclosure, what can the lender sell that house for and so what they're going to do is they're going to get hire uh, through an appraisal management company or an appraisal desk they're going to put out the bid for the job to be done by an independent appraiser who's going to go out and value your house mostly based off of sales comparison data and so what that means is they're looking at the neighborhood and similar houses and trying to figure out okay hey here's a house that's just like our subject property it's one block over, it just sold for this price. So chances are, our house, it's the same size house, same size lot, same builder, everything's the same. This is worth the same as that. Or maybe there's some adjustment that they have to make because of a view or something. So they're trying to figure out what is this house worth? They're not our employees. We have no control over the appraisers. The, everything has to be arm's length. We cannot influence it. You can't, your realtors can't. We can provide information to maybe help the appraiser, especially if it's a unique property, but we cannot influence it. They're not our employees. So don't get mad at us when this happens. Tell everybody the appraiser and the appraisal is really your best friend if you're the home buyer. Yeah, also I always say that the appraisal is your friend as a home buyer. And even if you're not using a lender and you're buying cash, the appraisal is still, still your one. friend and still get one. Yeah. Um, but let's jump into our situation. So okay. you, you have a comes sales price, you have a contract price, it's here, but the appraisal comes in a little bit low. Um, there, we got to figure that out. And so Austin and I typically see three scenarios played out. Um, the most favorable one for the buyer is that the seller would just come all the way down to make up that difference. Mm -hmm. And why, why does the seller do that, Austin? Why would they do that? Well, the seller is going to be inclined to work with you on this situation because appraisals are tracked by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac through their collateral underwriter system. And so these things are archived and it's open available data for the next appraiser. So if one appraiser appraises a house at X, the next appraiser is gonna be a little nervous to appraise it at Y um, because here's a, unless there's something materially wrong with the appraisal. And if there is something wrong with the appraisal, let the lender know and we can present that back to the appraisal management company or the appraiser and have them possibly reconsider their valuation. But if nothing's wrong on the appraisal, we just don't like the value we got, you're not going to be better off putting that house back out on the market unless you're hoping for a cash buyer. Yeah, exactly. So you're kind of stuck with what you got most of the time when it comes to that appraisal. Yep. So you can leverage that with the seller get them to come down and that happens a lot. Um, the sellers just come all the way down, especially if it's a small difference, maybe it's two grand or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the other situation we see play out here is that the buyer might come up, um, kind of jump the gun and said 2000, you know, that's a situation where maybe a buyer is like, I don't even need to renegotiate. It's not yeah, a big deal not to me. Deal. So maybe the buyer will come all the way up to meet that difference if the seller's not willing to budge. But there's also a third option is you meet in the middle. Maybe the contract price and the appraisal price is 10 grand of difference. Maybe they each come out five grand. The seller gives down five and the buyer comes up five. Yep. So we see that play out too. So just got to figure out a way to carve up that difference. And now you can kind of see what we're doing here. We're figuring out we have a difference. Someone's got to take it, take care of it. Yeah. And if you've got financing addendum on your contract, that financing addendum is going to protect you from this, uh, if the house comes in low, seller's not willing to renegotiate and you're not willing to come out of pocket, you're able to walk away and still recover your earnest money. So that's really important, uh, really important document. And one of the reasons why you should always have a financing addendum if you're getting a mortgage. Yep. So let's, let's play the scenario out with some real numbers here just to help paint the picture. 
One of the times we don't see this really being an issue and almost always a win is in the jumbo price range. So if we're buying an expensive house, borrowers putting more than 20% down, house comes in and appraises a little low, we might not change anything on that loan amount, but the seller might be willing to come down some. Yeah, could put the buyer in a better out of pocket um, situation. So yeah. their, their down payment might get a little bit smaller because that appraisal came in low, but their out of pocket might be exactly the same and their loan size is exactly the same. So their payments are the same. Yeah. So literally it could be a win for the buyer and that big jumbo side um, if you get a low appraisal. But whenever we see this becoming an issue is when you're putting less than 20% down. So let's play that out. Let's say that you were doing a 10% down on a $500,000 purchase, 10% would be 50K. But that house, this is a whammy, came in at 480. Well, now your 10% down payment's 48 grand. Well, that seems like an improvement, $2,000. That's not too bad. Well, but if the seller's not willing to come down from 500 and you still wanna buy that, that means you've got to come out of pocket that additional 20K. And so when we're looking at this, we're looking at it from a loan to value standpoint. And so you've got to do your down payment percentage based off of the lesser of the two, the purchase price or the appraised value. So in this scenario, you're not coming out of pocket 48K, you're coming out 68K. That's way worse. What's yep. our solution for how to address that though? Yeah, so a simple workaround is if you're putting 10% and this happens and you're still you know, wanting to buy the house and wanting to move forward, we could easily just move your down payment to 5%. And so that way you're out of pocket, we can try to match what your out of pocket would have been at 48,000 down payment. Mm -hmm. So you're still getting the house, still getting the same out of pocket. We're just moving your LTV, like Austin said earlier, to 5% down, so 95% LTV. Yep. So that's one of the ways we can work around. I also mentioned we're lending off of the lesser of the two, the purchase price or the appraised value. The other scenario is the inverse of this, that the appraisal comes in above. You're not gonna get credit for that free equity if the appraisal comes in high. We're gonna lend off of the loan or the purchase price because that's the lesser of the two. So if the appraisal comes in high, kudos, you made a great buy, yep. you got some free equity. Appraisal comes in right on the nose, congratulations. Your realtors and everybody involved did a great job negotiating and you're buying this thing for what it's worth. Appraisal comes in low, not that big of a deal necessarily because it might end up putting you in a better position and ultimately it's protecting you. So if you're on the buyer side of things, the appraisal is your best friend. That's right. All right, guys. See you. We'll see you all around. Bye.